my question is, what would you suggest that we do if we're starting our career in Salesforce, but we know that in five to seven years, our end goal is to become a consultant and go off on our own. I want to be stacking my talent while I'm learning. So when those five years do come up or those seven years do come up, that I can go out on my own gotcha. while we're working. Gotcha. Yeah. So the question's more about if you were going to put five years under your belt, what should you be doing in those five years to make sure you're positioning yourself? Okay. Great questions. Number one, if you want to go out on your own, I would highly recommend finding your way into working at a consultancy at some point in those five years, because that's going to give you exposure. Working at a consultancy is very much like running an independent consultancy. You are working with client, you're not really working with end users, you're doing implementation projects and enhancement projects and things like that. So working at a consultancy is very much like operating your own independent consultancy. And once you get to the consultancy, and most entry-level jobs are consultancies, just because it's a numbers game, consultancies hire more people, they have the resources available internally to support those people, they have the seniors and intermediates and everybody to support entry-level. So you're going to see most entry-level jobs being at consulting firms. That's good news if you want to get into freelancing. While you're there, do not keep one foot out the door, one foot in the door, lean in. You want to be the person raising your hand, right? Like balance your work life and your personal life. But if you see somebody saying like, hey, we, we need somebody to be on the sales call. You know how many delivery, delivery people being people like admins and developers and analysts, the people working the projects versus sales who are selling the, the packages and then the, the delivery team actually implements. So when you're working in delivery, most delivery people do not wanna touch sales. They do not wanna be involved with the sales people. It's just a different group. But a lot of times sales groups need sales engineers is what, you know, I've heard them called. And it's basically a delivery person like you who can talk the talk and walk the walk and you understand functionally what Salesforce is capable of, where a salesperson might not. So when a customer says, well, can Salesforce do this? Well, we have this pain point and we want to make sure it can solve this, that you're like, yes, it can do that. And this is how we've seen that done. And it makes them, the client feel more comfortable when they hear a professional from the delivery team talking. Most delivery people, anal analyst, admins, developers are going to go, no way. Like, I just want to go build another flow or process or update some page layouts or build some reports. I don't want to be on a sales call. Raise your hand. Be on the sales call. Why? Because you're going to be selling one day, right? You want to know what goes into these sales calls before it's you, before you're by yourself on the sales call. Get involved in the sales process. Figure out where they get their leads from. How do they even figure out who has Salesforce so that they can go, you know, decide who they're going to try to pitch to or who they're going to try to call or email or whatever else. Do that. Figure out who's using Salesforce. Constantly be building your brand. And when you are on LinkedIn building your brand as a professional at the consulting firm, think about where you're going to be five years from now. Think about talking about amazing projects you've worked on. What else can you do when you finish up a project for a client? Ask if they'll write you a recommendation on LinkedIn because you did such a good job, right? Shoot. If you have a good rapport with a client, Ask them if they'll write you a little testimonial snippet. You're not going to use it today. You're going you're gonna to use it five years from now. See if they'll write you a little, a little thing about how amazing it was working with you on the project and what you were able to accomplish and what a pleasure it was to work with you. Best way to get recommendations on LinkedIn, write recommendations for other people. So if you're on a project with five people from a client, go write all five of those people from the client recommendations, even if you barely work with them, and see if you don't get two or three back when you're doing that. In a consulting world, you're probably going to work 30 projects a year, five people a project, 150 written, get 50 back, work five years. You're going to have 250 professional recommendations on your LinkedIn profile over a five-year period because you thought about where you wanted to be later today. And there are so many ways you can prepare. So I would say build true relationships with your clients, lean into those relationships, let those be part of your network, at mention them when you're sharing something or posting something, because you may look up five years from now and that might be your first client, some, somebody you worked with three or four years ago that's no longer in contact with the consulting firm you just quit at. But you can reach out and say, hey, if you guys are looking for anything, just wanted to let you know I'm doing my own thing now. And those are your future clients. And, and if you work a consulting job for five years, you're probably never going to have to sell because you're just going to get to go back to old connections at that point. I'd say if you work at a consulting firm for two years, that'd be true. 
there's so many things you can do to prepare, but, but I would say that that's a lot of it. Document your stories, journal, projects you're working on, the challenges you faced, what you've overcome. You'll notice by the end of a year, if you try to rethink all the projects you worked on and the challenges and all the amazing work that you put in, you'll, you'll forget. It's hard to, you know, sort of bring it back. So I would say at least once a month, kind of journal what you worked on that month and the cool projects you did. And that's how you're going to build your portfolio later. The other thing you can be doing now is taking videos or at least screenshots of the work you're doing. Now there is non-disclosure. You can't disclose customer information or client logos or anything like that. It's all got to be, you know, it can't disclose who they are. It's got to be confidential. But a lot of times when you're building in a sandbox for a client, no customer data is in there, no logos are in there. And you can take screenshots of processes and flows that you've worked on and start building your portfolio for tomorrow. So I, I hope some of that helps. There's a lot you can do. And the, the, the big takeaway is work for a consulting firm, understand their process from marketing to sales, to delivery, to supporting all the way through. Those are things you want to be comfortable with so that you can see you're, you're going to learn the good and bad of consulting on somebody else's dollar. And then you're going to get to just use the things you've learned when you start your own.